Let's say number for Wednesday. Join me as we learn how to count, solve, and enjoy math. This is Teacher Tim and welcome to our class. How do you feel about math? Is solving numbers and letters just a walk in the park? Whoa! Kudos to all math wizards out there. But if math makes you feel worried, don't worry. I'm here to make solving problems involving quadratic equations and inequalities a lot easier. Learn with me, okay? Let's go! As we answer problems involving these equations, we will answer these three questions. First, what is a quadratic equation? Second, what do we need to remember when solving problems involving quadratic equations? Third, how can quadratic equations be used in solving real-life problems? Come on, let's begin! We may not notice it, but quadratic equations are used in everyday life. Yes! We use quadratic equations in calculating areas, determining the product's profit, or formulating the speed of an object. The wonderful part of having something that can be modeled by a quadratic equation is that you can easily solve the equation when set equal to zero and predict the patterns in the function values. Awesome, right? Take a look at this image beside me. When you throw a ball or shoot an arrow, fire a missile or throw a stone, it goes up in the air, slowing down as it travels, then comes down faster and faster. By using a quadratic equation, you can tell its position at all times. The name quadratic comes from quad, meaning square, because the variable gets squared like x squared. It is also called an equation of degree 2 because of the exponent 2 on the x. Quadratic equations refer to equations with at least one squared variable, with the most standard form being ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. The x represents an unknown value or variable, while a, b, and c are coefficients. b and c can have any value, but a can't be zero. Hmm. Can you tell me what is the constant term in this equation? Correct! It's C. How about the linear term? Great! It's Bx. And of course, which is the quadratic term? Fantastic! It's Ax squared. Great! Let's see how much you have understood. Identify which of the following equations is an example of a quadratic equation. Ready? Let's begin! Is this an example of a quadratic equation? Yes, you're correct! In this quadratic equation, a is equal to 2, b is equal to 5, and c is equal to 3. Let's have another example. This equation might seem a little tricky because we can't find a and c. Can we still consider this as a quadratic equation? Good job! Even though we cannot see a and c here, we can still consider this as a quadratic equation. Where do you think a and c are? Hmm, that's right! We don't usually write 1x squared because variables with no number have a coefficient of 1 already. So a here is equal to 1. While c is not shown, so that means it is equal to 0. That was great! How about this? Is this a quadratic equation? You are right! This is not an example of a quadratic equation because it's missing the x squared. 
Because that means A here is equal to zero and it can't be quadratic. Alright, now that you already know what quadratic equations are, we can now start finding the value of the variable or the unknown in each equation. Are you ready? Let's begin. First, let's talk about the square root quality. Do you know what that is? The square root property is one method that can be used to solve quadratic equations. This is the best method to use whenever the quadratic equation only contains x squared terms. That implies no presence of any x or linear term being raised to the first power somewhere in the equation. For any real number k, if x squared is equal to k, then x is the square root of k. Note that there is always the possibility of two roots for every square root. One positive and one negative. Placing a plus minus sign in front of the side containing the constant after you take the square root will ensure that the final answer will include both possible roots. Can you still follow? Great! Now let's proceed to the steps in solving quadratic equations using the square root property. Step 1. Isolate the x squared term on one side of the equal sign. Step 2. Use the square root property x equals plus minus square root of k. Step 3. Simplify the radical. Step 4. Write the solutions. Let's have some examples. Take a look at this. We can simply take the square root of 36. Don't forget to use both positive and negative square roots. Alright, the correct answer will be positive negative 6. Remember, practice makes perfect. Now let's try some more. Let's have 5x squared minus 45 is equal to 0. To solve this, we simply have to transpose negative 45 on the right side. Remember, since we transpose this, we have to change its sign. Now, we have 5x squared is equal to 45. Now, we still have 5 as our coefficient. To simplify, we have to divide both sides by 5. So that leaves us with x squared. Now, on the other side, 45 divided by 5 is 9. Okay, we now have x squared is equal to 9. Now it's easier to get the square root. Do you know the square root of 9? Alright, our final answer is positive negative 3. Let's have another one. We have negative 2x squared plus 15 is equal to x squared minus 12. Hmm, we now have two x squared terms, one on each side of this equation. Now we have to place all the squared terms of x squared on the left side of this equation and combine all the constants on the right side. Remember, when you transpose, you have to change the sign. Now, we have negative 2x squared minus x squared is equal to negative 12 minus 15. Next, we have to simplify this equation. That gives us negative 3x squared is equal to negative 27. Now, we have to divide both sides by negative 3. So now, we have x squared is equal to 9. Then, we can now get the square root of 9. Our final answer is x is equal to positive negative 3. You're doing great! 
Now I think you can try it on your own. Game? Alright, let's see. Can you try solving this quadratic equations using the square root property? Grab your papers and pens to get the answers. Let's have x squared minus 1 is equal to 24. What is the value of x in this equation? That's right! The answer is positive negative 5. Take a look at our solution. Congratulations! You did great! Now let's have a quick recap. Quadratic equations refer to equations with at least one squared variable. Its most standard form is ax plus bx plus c is equal to zero. The x represents an unknown or a variable, while a, b, and c, being coefficients, can have any value except that a can't be zero. We can solve a quadratic equation by using the square root property. To do that, we'll need to isolate the x squared term on one side of the equal sign. Then, use the square root property, x equals plus minus square root of k and simplify the radical. And last but not the least, write the solutions. Again, we use quadratic equations in calculating areas, determining a product's profit, and formulating the speed of an object. Do you have other examples of when we use quadratic equations in real life? Let us know in the comment section below. And that's it for our discussion today. I hope you learned a lot about quadratic equations. If you did, Click thumbs up and share this video to help juniors like you to count, solve, and enjoy math. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. Again, this is Teacher Tim and see you on our next Number Wednesday.